Hi Aries, welcome to your weekly video. I hope you guys are fantastic. Thank you for stopping in. I really appreciate each and every one of you Aries. So I hope you're navigating through this energy okay. We are in Scorpio season, so there's a lot of hidden energy. But the good news is, is eventually everything that is hidden in Scorpio during this life cycle energy comes to light. So it's perfectly fine. You just go through the process. We do have a bump in the road with Mars in retrograde and the moon coming through up into the Orion energy of the Orion belt. So Orion is a certain energy that comes through Sagittarius and also Scorpio. The moon, of course, is very intense. It intensifies the way you feel and it enhances psychic and empathic, but mostly like psychic gut feeling um, energies that have to do with hunches. This energy is intensified as the moon moves through and the power of each zodiac is then enhanced. So moon enhances sun. Moon enhances the emotions that you feel, the way that you receive. The sun enhances your action. So we have the sun enhancement of a water sign, very intense emotions. But as the moon moves into Scorpio, we'll have sun and moon energies in Scorpio. It'll be very intense. It has to do with power, force, and life cycles, rebirths, endings, beginnings. So basically, a lot of decisions being made during this energy. Now, right now, until literally the 23rd, um, when the moon is moving through this energy, it wants to feel safe, protected, and secure. The risk-taking energy of Sagittarius will be around the 23rd. During Thanksgiving, around the 23rd, is when you're going to start to feel like you want to go through changes and restructuring um, based on the way you feel and receive energies. Now, what does it mean? It means, how do I feel? How is everything going for me? How do I feel on a day-to-day -day basis? And how do I want to make changes? So right now, though, up until the 23rd, we're just sort of sitting in this energy of I want to feel safe. I want to feel secure. And I, it's not really about risk. It's really about stability. When it moves, when this moon moves through, you're going to feel an intense feeling um, one way or another. You'll either want to go for something or you won't want to go for something. So because Sagittarius, so moon energy is it is the energy of perception reception some people say the moon is the mother it's the feeling it's the energy you feel and the sun is the father it's sort of the action the aggression when the moon moves into Sagittarius this is the energy of the philosopher teacher as well so Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter. It has to do with good luck and good fortune. But it also has to do with like, um, fortune's wheel. Good things. Now, the energy of Sagittarius is also in opposition to the energy of Gemini. Which has to do with far-reaching communication with people. Visions, being a visionary. Global now, when the moon would be in Gemini, which it was a few days ago, that is more about the people really close to you. When the moon will go to Sagittarius, this is about risks based on larger, broader thinking. And Sagittarius also has to do with a life cycle um, based on what you've been taught or what you know, coming from basically however you were informed. So you go based on what you know, what you learned, what you went to school for, what your parents taught you, and then the emotions are associated with that learning process because Sagittarius is learning until you get to Moon and Capricorn, which Capricorn is the manifestation of what you learned or achieved. So if you didn't, if you didn't learn anything and you didn't achieve anything, then you would sort of just have to deal with it. If you actually learn something 
this is very vague, but if you learn something, whatever it is you're learning, you achieve something, the manifestation of that will be coming through roughly towards the end of November, around when the moon will be moving through Capricorn Aquarius. Because what you learn is the manifestation of what you were conditioned or taught, and then it moves into how you are successful in the world or how you are achieving something in the world. And on top of that, it moves into society. How do you deal with others in your network? So if you were, this is like very vague, but if you were taught to be a bully and to fight with people and to like beat out the competition, that might in turn get you fame and success or get you success. But how does that then transition over into society and your network? How are you seen? Do you only deal with bullies? Do you only deal with aggressive people? Or is your reputation somehow affected? Like people know you as this like street cred. Um, for some reason I'm thinking like street cred. Like do you have like a street cred as an Aries of being a certain way? Um, you're the warrior. You're definitely, you're the warrior. You're the person who is ambitious. But Aries can also be the fighter for a cause. It can also be the fighter for things that don't matter so much. So you have to choose your battles and pick the hill, pick the hill to die on. <laughs> Do you, it, does it matter that much? Um, so it's not that you need to worry about your reputation or how you've you know, gone about things. It's more when you get to this place where you're going to decide to, when fortune's will starts to turn Sagittarius, Jupiter is in Pisces. There's a lot that is a fantasy. A lot of it isn't real right now, but it will be when Jupiter goes direct into Aries. So you can make your dreams into reality. You have to take a a soul searching or a deep dive into what was I taught? What do I believe? And is it working for me? Um, was I taught to be this way? And is it working? Is this working for me? Yes or no? <laughs> okay, let's see for Aries for the week ahead. This is a chill week. It really is a chill week. However, Mars retrograde will shake things up because it is in a yod. It is aspected at um, a pivot. So a pivot is where things change. You pivot on your heel and you turn. <laughs> and Mars retrograde in, where is it? I think it's in Gemini. It has to do with the people close to you and the words that are said, spoken, written, typing, texting. There's a pivot on the heel. Um, so don't worry, um, just pick the hill that you want to, or choose your battles. Um, so let's see, Aries, show us the week ahead. It could be a very nice week if you just, you know, you're getting Scorpio energy. Oh, wow, okay. You have choices and options that are confusing or there's just too many of them. Seven of Cups. Um, this is also fantasy based on, it is uh, Venus Scorpio. It's like when you like too many things, there's too many choices, there's too much. Um, okay, so you do have the four of wands. You have stability, you have time off, you have a partner, someone that you enjoy being with. This person is here, but there's a lot going on. Um, seven of cups is Venus, Scorpio. It means there's so many pleasurable things that I like, and I feel a certain way about all these things, but what am I going to do? Um... What's the root of this issue for the Aries? Um, we're doing the week ahead, please. Week ahead. Oh, wow. Goodness. Okay. You put a lot of thought into it. There's a lot of Gemini energy right here. Like you're thinking about it a lot. Somebody gives you some information. They're very direct or you were very direct with someone. The root of the issue is over analysis or overthinking could be worry we do have like this past energy of feeling like you're trapped or you don't have control over something um so let's see what is the future energy here for aries showing up as what 
What's Aries? Oh, wow. Okay. So we have a magician um, manifesting, making something happen. Somebody's got ideas. They know how to put things together. This is good. Major Arcana for someone who manifests. Your energy is a page of swords. You could be doing more observing and collecting information rather than um, taking part. So there is a page of swords here. Um, what's going on around? There's a friendship here. There's a person here who is approaching you in a friendly manner. So this is okay. What's happening? Your fear is stuck energy, like where you won't have any control and you won't be able to make a decision. It will be feeling like it's beyond your control. Um, it could be the feeling like where you have to sacrifice your time, your money, your energy. What's the outcome here? Oh, okay. You're afraid that you're going to be stuck. What you get is the, the rebirth, a resurrection. Something is brought up, brought back to life. It could be a day of judgment. We do have here strength. Something requires great inner strength. Strength means peace. It also means Leo. So um, what do we have? Oh my goodness. Okay, we do have the sun. We have a lot of happiness. So I feel like the sun is um, the major arcana for joy, happiness, good things, bright futures, illumination. Okay, so something is being decided on. There is a king of the swords. There is someone who directs, delegates, gives information, speaks, like gives direction, doesn't really want questions. Um, what's going on is possibly here a feeling of no control. Like I'd have no control over this. There's something that um, I feel like I don't have the answers to. Um, I would say trust your angels and guides, God. Um, you're in this page of swords. This could be something where you don't necessarily have the knowledge or you don't have the experience in something, but you're learning and you're asking questions. Now, a person around you, the environment is really good. It's the energy of a friendly, helpful person. Um, and you end up with the sun and the judgment. Okay, what is the sun? Somebody is a magician. Somebody can pull a rabbit out of a hat. What is this here? What is the sun? Oh, wow. So we do have this person here who feels kind of snarky or they feel kind of entitled. It's this person who could be a little resentful. Um, it is a challenge. It is overcoming a challenge. But we do have here the decision of a hierophant, so which is a structured system, like a bank, an authority, a government, something where there's policies and procedures to follow. So what happens here with Aries? What is this energy? What's happening? Show us. Um, what is the Hierophant? I think it's a good thing. The Hierophant, the sun. Okay, there's something where you don't want to give up. You want to persist. And what is going on as the outcome for Aries? I know I got the sun already, but what is going on for Aries? Queen of the coin, money, financial wealth, security. Um, there could be someone around you who's patient, but it could also be you're doing very well financially. What is the, the I almost said the machine. What is the magician? The empress. Somebody's making it happen for you. There could be someone around you who is making it. Is They've got ideas. They know what to do. They know who to call. They know what to do. Okay. Somebody could be watching you as well. The Page of Swords could be somebody who's influencing you. They're watching you. The King of Water, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. Someone who follows their intuition. They've got very strong emotional maturity. Okay. Main energy is Scorpio. Ending here is a Nine of Coin. Independent. Um, independently wealthy, having a comfortable life, having money in the bank, things are stable. Um, you may have been paid, had to be patient as you're waiting for something. We have a 10 of swords and seven of coin. There's something here that seems quite stressful that you may have been waiting for, but ultimately it does look like a good outcome. 
Let me just get some more clarification. What is the Hierophant and the Sun? Okay, something here is clearly on your mind. Nine of Swords. So you're, it's the root of the issue, really, is stop stressing. <laughs> what do we have here with the Sun? What does it mean? Okay, you do have some emotional news. Okay, Knight of Water. What is the Strength energy with the Judgment? The Fool card. Okay, Freedom. Could be something about a new chapter, a new beginning. What is the Hierophant bringing in here? Okay, the Magician. Somebody is working their magic. And they are working a system. Um, there is something about following policy procedure. And uh, you end up as the Queen of Pentacles. What is the Queen of Pentacles? What is the Queen of Pentacles? Okay, we got a wish coming true here. So it looks like to me, this Mars retrograde in Gemini is kind of throwing you through a loop because it's when things don't go the way as smooth as you had hoped. But actually, the root of the issue is something was painful that you were waiting for to happen and you felt like it was going to happen right away immediately um, and it didn't or something here changed but no no mind like don't pay any mind to that somebody is going to fix it for you who or what is the empress sun card okay so you're going to have a lot of happiness here there could be something financial it could be about um, feeling valued as well the sun can be the illumination the growth the positive energy um, feeling valued why is there a king of air here why is this person here king of the water okay there is a sensitive person there is someone who has emotional maturity they are in this water sign or air sign energy Gem pisces cancer scorpio gemini libra aquarius there might be two people what is seven of cups okay you're confused because of choices or options. And I feel like you do like them all. I, I don't feel like it's not, it's not like you don't like them. You like everything. What is this here? Why are you afraid of the hangman? You don't want to wait. Okay. Because there is something here of value being given to you. You could have paid for something as well. You're wanting to persist. Why is there a persisting energy here? You're not giving up. Don't quit right before the blessing because nine is right before the ten. There is a wisdom. There is someone here with wisdom. They're shining the light on something. They have experience. They have their uh, professional or an expert. Somebody could be looking over something, providing you with their expertise. Uh, they may have a lot of life experience, professional experience. Why is Aries the page of swords? Okay. Okay, Four of Swords. You're not talking to someone. There may have been someone who was annoying or you thought they were annoying. It was a. It looks like it may have been triggering, possibly. Um, you do get your wish at the end of this. What is Nine of Cups? Queen of Water. There's someone who shows you a lot of compassion. Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, emotional, sensitive, caring, kind, friendly energy. Oh, wow, there's a King of Swords again. Okay. Who is this King of Swords? Oh, wow. Okay. Um, show me what is this Nine of Cups? What is this wish coming true? King of Coin. King and Queen of Coin. You have wealth coming in and stability. You may even have a relationship that's very stable. Um, so... You're getting this benefit or you're getting this wish, emotional, sensitive, you know, joyful parties, celebrations and fun energy at the end of all of this really like doubt, like there's a lot of doubt, doubt that you're going through here. Um, this is the root Gemini. So Mars Gemini retrograde. So I read somewhere one time that a retrograde is an opportunity to fix your karma and i thought at first what like 
that, you know, who cares? But um, it is true because it says if you're doing something, the same thing over and over when a glitch happens, when a problem happens, you aren't really changing and you aren't really benefiting or getting off the karmic cycle. So they say use um, a retrograde, Mars retrograde in Gemini, words are flying, pens are flying, you know, typing, um, use it as an opportunity to do it differently than you have. So there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of Mars. So this actually is the card. I kid you not. You can look it up. This card, Nine of Swords, is the energy of Mars, the planet, when it is transiting through the third house. And that is what we are in right now. So we are in this energy of Mars pulling away from its um, orbit. It's so it's pulled away and it could be less intense as well when it's pulled away but it could also create glitchy energies and the glitches are what is concerning you however it causes you to go into scorpio energy um it is venus scorpio but it's strange a lot of books will say seven of cups is neptune the planet Neptune in Pisces, which is fantasy or dreaming. So Neptune is like mystical, um, imagination. So some books say it's Venus Scorpio. Some books say it's Neptune Pisces. Whatever the case, it's, a, it's water emotions are, are very strong but they're also very scattered um you are in a fired up energy though you are in this powerful fired up energy of the queen of the wands now you do get some information here coming from an aquarius like an aquarian energy it could be a person who has aquarius in their chart they more give direction and they could even say things that are unpopular, like an unpopular view. It's, it's very professional, but it could be very like straightforward. Um, it did come up with a king of water as well. So show us this energy. What is this person? Yeah, it's a person who holds back four of coin. They just, they're like, I sit here and I direct and I delegate, but I don't really... Um, I don't really get involved in things. So who is this person here? What are they doing? Okay, six of air, they could not be returning your phone calls or maybe you're not returning their phone calls. There's something here where you don't want to talk to them because of the difficulty in the conversation for some reason. Five of swords is like, it's a challenging conversation. Empress, value, okay. You know your value. You know your worth. There's something about Venus, Taurus. Um, so you're in... The main energy is Neptune or Scorpio water energy. Page of Cups. Okay. You do get to the place you want to be. Oh, wow. Two of Cups. There is harmony. What's behind this? The wheel starts to turn. Okay. Something's here will change for the better. Like I said, the moon, after we just had the full moon solar eclipse, lunar eclipse in, what was it, Taurus, it will be in the energy of Jupiter, Sagittarius, global change, or at least far distance, long distance change by the 23rd. And that's when you ex can expect things to sort of start get going. Um, let me pull from the wisdom of the oracle so up until then we're in scorpio we have mars transiting through in a retrograde cycle that are bumps in the road <laughs> a bump in the road is not the end of the world 
it's a bump in the road. Um, mail gets lost. Emails get deleted. Um, I don't know what else. Um, focus on the here and now. Okay, so focus on, you know, living in the moment. Don't stress out about tomorrow. Don't stress out about yesterday. Yesterday's gone and tomorrow hasn't happened. But I do, I'm the kind of person where I feel like it's good to plan. But, I mean, it's definitely good to plan. Because if you look at the odds, the odds are like, we're going to be here tomorrow, you know, knock on. <laughs> like, odds are, you know. So, oh wow, yeah. So there's something here where you could be asking why, like why is this happening? It's, um, so this is the card of look in a book. There might be something where you have to look it up and do some research if you don't know. We have to be fair, something is about fair, just, it's like following the rules, this is to be fair. Something needs to be made fair, um, or it will be made fair. What else here for Aries? Show us Aries. Ah, yeah, we got the fork in the road. So like I said, there's like a bump in the road. Little things, they don't have to be enormous. Um, yin, water energy this week. Emotions, sensitivity, empathic. Uh, hunches intuition wow we have the death card so there's going to be something about building something back up something is going to be a game you don't want to play it says not for you with the chess game so this is like i'm not going to play this game and then we have here time for a nap you need sleep <laughs> um you do get what you want though at the end of this it's nine of cups queen of coin king of coin like you get what you want um some of you could have, have anxiety. Um, oh, you're going to be very blessed. I just really love this card. So you're going to be blessed. The glitches of Mars have to do with action. It has to do with uh, signatures. Um, surgery, instruments. Do everything slowly and carefully. Do not rush. Do not drive quickly. Um, you know, the endorsement of a document. Don't sign your name to something right away. Um, Mars is obviously the warrior. It's also, you know, the champion um, for others. Um, there's so much with Mars. You have a very loyal heart. So you're going to be rewarded for your loyal heart. The story of Mars ruling over the first house is because you have to get something going to actually have anything. So you have to get up. You have to spring into action. The flowers bloom during springtime. Things start to go. Um, now... Mars was actually a wounded warrior who was rejected by his family and then <laughs> was the, um, ah, we got the land of milk and honey here coming to you, Aries. Really good. So this is like wait for the blessing because the, the, the blessing is here. Good community. This card is about a good community. Okay, so Mars, the story of Mars in mythology is the warrior that was rejected by his family he was the god on mount olympus that was rejected by his father and mother too i think and but yet he was sent down to sacrifice to battle for on behalf of others kind of like an attorney or something like that but he was the physical warrior and then he had the affair Wait, Mars was with Aphrodite, Venus. Mars and Venus were the couple, the love couple, but Venus was forced to marry someone she didn't love. 
So it's like a really strange story. It's like Venus Aphrodite was forced to marry she to someone she didn't really love, and so she had the affair with Mars. <laughs> Um, anyway, <laughs> I will talk to you all soon. Thank you for being here. I hope you have a wonderful week ahead and take care. Bye for now.